you know, it wasn't that long ago that people saw mothers breastfeeding all the time. They were there in real life, they were there in paintings, and it's not inconceivable because a woman can grow up in North America now and never ever in their whole life had ever seen a baby at the breast. And so the whole visual image of what a baby is supposed to look like at the breast has been completely lost as well. And so mothers come to deliver a baby and they suddenly uh, realize when they've got the baby in their arms, I don't know what to do with this baby. And of course, the people that are helping her often don't know either because they also don't have the visual image of the baby at the breast rather than a baby feeding from a bottle. Yes, it's extremely important for a baby to be skin to skin with a mother immediately after birth. Not for just five or six minutes, but for a full hour or two really does wonders for the baby. It results in the baby sometimes latching on all by himself and when they do that they usually latch on really well. It keeps their blood sugars up to be skin-to-skin -skin contact with the mother. It keeps their temperature up much better than an incubator and the studies show that the mothers and the babies who are kept skin-to-skin -skin are usually breastfeeding longer and more exclusively than those babies that are separated. Furthermore the babies cry less if they're skin-to-skin -skin with the mother which is a good thing. I would say that probably about 90% of all the problems that we see in the clinic can be resumed as, I don't have enough milk, my nipples are sore, the baby's refusing to latch on, and then maybe another small percentage, my baby is colicky. But I think that what we really need to show mothers, what mothers are not really learning, and not only mothers, but a lot of health professionals don't really know how to get a baby to well latch on to the breast, how to know if that baby is well latched on, and how to know the baby is getting milk. And I think that actually that last one is of supreme importance. And once we have uh, people understanding how to know a baby's getting milk, then a lot of the problems can be dealt with. So how do we prevent the slow flow is we get the best latch possible. So you push in with the side of the, your forearm here, your hand underneath the baby's face. The nipple then should automatically point to the roof of the baby's mouth. You see that? So run the nipple along the baby's upper lip and then straight on. That's powerful. There, you saw that pause in the chin? Mm -hmm. So these little nibbles that he was doing means not that much milk is getting to him, but he doesn't need a lot at this age. Okay. Okay. And if he doesn't drink, then yeah. squeeze. It's really tricky to see uh -huh. if you're not used to it. There, mouthful. You saw a little pause. He'll go pause pause and that pause in the chin now if the baby were on perfectly he'd be looking up at you a little bit okay mm -hmm. so let's try that again run the nipple along his upper lip from one corner to the other wait for that gape straight on if the baby latches on here you see they get nothing right mm -hmm. they latch on here and they start to get milk you see that's colostrum because you see the color of it it's golden mm -hmm.
If the baby latches on here, that's what the baby gets. But if the baby latches on here, there's still lots of milk. How and why it is so important to latch correctly is to give them the analogy of having a whole pile of straws in their breast. So if you have a whole bunch of straight straws, maybe there are 15 to 20 to 25 of straight straws in the breast, and you latch baby on correctly so that the chin comes in the breast and not the nose, you'll get nice flowing of the milk through the straws. Okay, so let's point out what's so different, why this latch is what you're calling the miracle. Very often, moms are pushing the nose into the breast, and when that happens, the nipple will then go centered in the mouth, and that causes pain. Mm -hmm. So we don't want that. We'd like to keep the nipple pointed up towards the roof of the mouth. See the nipple inside the mouth pointing that way. Well, how do I know it's pointed that way? If the chin is in the breast touching mm -hmm. and the nose does not, so I can actually pass my finger through here. Mm -hmm. There's no touching. That means that the nipple must be pointed up. And you can imagine with the areola here, an asymmetric latch, we see more areola there. The rest looks like it's disappearing in the mouth or jaw. It shows me that the nipple is pointed up to the roof where it's protected. But something else happens, not just as the nipple protected, but now baby gets more milk because now baby can get this area of the jaw around the parts of the ducts which act like milk sinuses and help to compress on that and use the tongue to help bring the milk along those ducts. So that way baby can get much more milk this way than just being on the nipple or just having the nipple centered in the mouth. So the way to get there is to have your positioning right. So bodies of the baby is in a straight line, mm -hmm. and the bum is tucked tight here. Mm -hmm. Tight. Good. Fingers are underneath the face. Good. So we support the weight of the head here. We're on the baby's skull, not on the neck. Mm -hmm. Good. This way the weight of the baby is taken here and not on the hand. Everything else is nonsense, I think. You know, the number of times the baby feeds, the length of time the baby uh, go, uh, stays on the breast. All this is not very meaningful. Even the scale is not that meaningful. And this is where I uh, think that we're losing our way, is that we're spending too much time looking at the scale, we're looking at percentage weight losses, and we're not spending time looking at the baby. More importantly than what he looks like when he's on the breast is what he's doing. And I talk constantly to mothers about how to know the baby's getting milk. We try to teach the mother to latch the baby on in such a way that when the baby's on the breast, his chin touches the breast, his nose usually doesn't. Even if the mother has very large breasts, the lips are usually flanged outwards, like that, and the baby covers more of the areola with his lower lip than his upper lip and a baby is hanging on to the breast. A baby who doesn't hang on to the breast often will not nurse at all. They'll just sit there and uh, sleep. And this is one of the keys, especially in the first few days,